Gators 8-3 coming off their most impressive win to date in Charlotte, the second ever Jump Man Invitational and a blowout victory over Michigan. Ball's up in the air, tip is won by Faye Toot. We are underway. Gators in the home whites, Winthrop in the road maroons. This is the second game of a double header inside the Exact Tech Arena. Men won earlier today against Quinnipiac. Rashea Kyle picks up where she left off. She's been outstanding this season, Brittany. She really has. She's a player who they need to get going inside early and often. Some changes in the starting lineup as you see beneath for Winthrop. Angel Burkos will get the start. They play about a five guard look. Samika Randall Lay, fourth year as the head coach. And taking over for Lynette Woodard, who went 24 and 70 is three years as the head coach. Gators second look at it. Rimdahl's been scorching hot over the last couple, back in the starting lineup. Mitharu tripped up, and we'll get a foul here. The first comes out in a 2-3 zone, and then the next possession over, they're going to man. So expect Florida, they've got to be able to decide what the offense is early or what the defense is early so they can run the offensive set that they want. Gators with the same starting five we saw on December 20th against Michigan. Leilani Correa will have a third consecutive game off the bench. That's where she's played best. Alberti Rimdahl is back in there. Their star who we highlighted at the top is Aliyah Mathuru. Gators a two big lineup with Faye Dute and Rashea Kyle. Into the corner, Alberti Rimdahl wide open. Right to Faye Toot, look what I found. And that's what's going to be open. <laughs> if they're going to play a 2-3 zone against Florida, the way that Bertie Rimdahl shoots, it's a soft miss if she misses the ball, if she misses the shot. And then that allows Florida's big to just catch it. No one marked her defensively to box her out. Easy layup and put that for Florida. Winthrop, very good defensive team. They force about 21 turnovers a game, 10 steals. Offensively, that's where they struggle. Just over 57 a game. That's eighth in the Big South. Layup off the mark for Leonor Paisano. And so that's a challenge for Florida. They need to say, hey, we're going to try to hold them to X amount of points. Maybe hold them under 40. That's kind of what, you know, the other SEC teams have. Texas A&M held them to 32. Bama held them to 50. So if you're Florida, you're saying, hey, we don't want to allow them to come out and have an offensive explosion. We want to tighten up our defense. Fate two to shot it really well out there. Comes up empty. Meanwhile, the prior bucket from Angel Burgos. She's seeing her first start of the year, the Richmond transfer. We're looking at a current four-guard lineup. Kyle on a high hedge, ball squirts free. Layla Reynolds down to the ground as she tangles with Burgos, and it goes to the Gators. And I think, Kyle, you can expect for her to be pretty aggressive defensively, especially on high on-ball screens, hedging big, maybe trapping at times, and the rotation needs to be right. And in that situation, when it falls to the ground, and they're able to get a turnover out of it. Florida enters in, Brittany, over 80 points per game. A lot of the numbers are skewed because they scored 115 against Gardner-Webb. What was a 78-point victory against a Big South team? But put up 82 against the Big Ten's best defense in Michigan. Matharu strokes it from deep, missed everything out of play. And sometimes that's what 10 days off, kind of. You got to get, get, get back in the groove and then 42 days away from your home court. But yeah, talking about the game against Michigan that Florida just came off of, boy, they were on offensively, shooting really well from the field. Of note, Leilani Correa's on the floor for the first time. Has been sensational over the last two, 12 or last 17 from the floor off the bench, attacking the rim. Been a different mentality for her. And, and sometimes, you know, players come play better, come pre more prepared coming off the bench, you know, a minute or two in. Spin move underneath. Tiana Span with the basket. Look at Ginobili in the Spurs. Yeah. I mean, that's a real good example. Layla Reynolds will get two shots. I know Layla's impressed you in her freshman campaign, 11 games in, almost nearly averaging double figures. Yeah, I was going to say, she's just coming into her own, I think, each and every game. Every game, she's getting better at something. Some aspect of her game is improving every time she steps onto the court, whether that's defensively, offensively, the way she looks to attack. She's a player for Florida who also loves to learn the game. So she's going to come, when she comes out of the game, she's going to go to the bench, learn from the staff, from the other players, hey, what do I need to do better to help my team? How can I position myself on the court 
to be a, a better scorer, to help defensively. She's also a very unselfish player. So she's not a player that's gonna come in, and, you know, if that's not a great shot, try to force it. She will try to make the extra pass. She has done that to her post players when the defense comes over and tries to double team her because she's such a good attacker. And we have seen when she's played, she really likes that spin move and very smooth with it. It shows how much confidence she's playing with. 10 starts in her debut season. Gators come out with some press here. Fast break points were big in Charlotte against Michigan, turning defense into offense. That's what Kelly Ray Finley wants to do, emphasize defense at the start of the season. Marissa Gassaway averaging near, nearly a double-double, can't finish at the doorstep. Correa has the loose ball. Gassaway has a good move to get an open look, but just can't finish. Atharu tries another, this time hits, rips the net from deep. Great movement offensively in transition, a little misdirection, she comes back over, catches the ball, not afraid to fire again, even though she missed the first one. That's what shooters do, you gotta keep firing. Hit five threes in the last game against Michigan, got off to a really slow start, and it shows in the numbers from three specifically, only 28%, but she has really started to heat up. She's a confident shooter from deep. And, and she's she's kind of a, a game player shooter as well, so if she's feeling the competition and all that, it's a game time, kind of when that fireball would come on, what is it, NBA Jam? Yeah. And you just keep shooting, but that's what you want coming into SEC play. Couple of early responses, Leonora Paisano, the bucket, rimmed all short corner, feathers it in. Both teams exchanging buckets here. Florida 4-7 beginning, three of five here for Winthrop. They have a couple of turnovers to their name. And if you're Florida, you really want to come out and be the aggressor defensively and try to turn them over. And that's what Florida's looking to do with a little token press, but then being more aggressive on those on-ball screens. Ronaldo Mark, their top scorer, not on the floor yet. Presumably off the bench. Paisana triple. That's an area where they really struggle from deep. Leak out, Correa. Tina Rice from behind. He'll say last touch, Florida. Great hustle by Rice to get back and not allow an easy layup. You can see here, in an offensive segment, she's just trailing Aaliyah and catches the ball in motion and lets it fly. And Birdie here, she's really coming in in double figure scores last game out. She's got a great mid-range game to go along with the three-point shooting that she can put up for you. She had a career high, average eight and a half points a game last year for Rimdahl. Red hot over the last two, 14 of her last 19. Burgos ahead of the field, got fouled by Matharu, her hand skyward. Andrew Burgos will go to the strike. Matharu, a player for Florida, a, a few games really kind of struggled in the foul department. Last game out, though, against Michigan, she didn't have any fouls, I don't believe, and she drew six fouls. So that was really good for Florida. She's someone who has to be on the floor for them, especially come SEC play. You know what's interesting and noteworthy heading into conference play? The Gators, their opponents five times have shot 20 or more free throws. They're last in the SEC in the number of fouls per game. So they have to maybe at times be a little bit more smart with their hand placement and yes. how aggressive they play on defense. Because that will be the difference in games in the league, the free throw line. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of times it is, and that's the importance of hitting your free throws, especially early in the game. But, I mean, you're right. If you're going to play aggressive defense, you also have to be smart with it. And this is a game where you want to practice playing smart defense and not fouling. And the last couple times, Florida actually was in a 2-3 zone a couple times, maybe to help prevent that. Interception from Correa. Nobody was looking for the ball. Everybody had their head up back the other way. Span to the rack, can't finish. Put back in by Gassaway. Winthrop, the Big South's eighth ranked offense out of nine teams. Three times they've been held under 50 points. This is their fourth power five opponent. Duke right at the doorstep and, will finish. And that's just great ball presence for your post player down low. She's inside that, what was the charge arc but she doesn't bring the ball down against two players. She uses her height as her advantage, keeps the ball high and finishes right around the basket. Doesn't put the ball on the ground, doesn't fade away, but goes right up against a, a smaller competition. We mentioned they played three power five teams. They lost to Clemson, Alabama, and Texas A&M. An average losing margin of 37 points in those three. As ball goes out, stays with Winthrop. 
Gators starting those two bigs today. Right now, a four-point lead. Fade Toot right at the rack for two. Gators by four. Special moment between coach and player, Liam Atharu. The hug from Kelly Ray Finley. Liam Atharu got the 1,000th career point at the free throw line on the road at Tulsa. Yeah. So a milestone game for her. Having to sit out last year due to the transfer rules. Top scorer of an Elite Eight Texas team. Broughton, whoa! She was gonna go, I think, pass it over to Birdie, but she didn't cut in and then tried to get away with it, but credit her for, yeah, you know, keep going. The whistle didn't blow, so you're gonna keep going until the referees make that call. Yeah, it would have been some and one and mixtape one mix stuff if the whistle yeah. didn't come. And make a sports center on that. Gators trying to get Zippy going, her senior season. And this, this is a good game for her to come in and kind of run that point guard position, get people in the right position, pick it up defensively. And, and you know, she's been getting back, I think, slowly confidence-wise, offensively, shooting the ball a little bit better the past couple games. A-plus defender yeah. is Zippy Broughton, and they're going to need that off the bench even more than some of the scoring that she does. Exactly. Especially with Rimdahl and Correa picking things up on the offensive end. And what it does, if she can come in and run kind of the point position for them, it allows Rimdahl to go off to the side and become that two guard shooter that she is so good at, where she can just sit there, wait for the pass and, and shoot it, not have to come off of anything. It just opens up a lot. Angel Burgo steps out. This is the second straight game in the state of Florida for Winthrop. Prior to holiday break, they lost by six on the road at UNF. Jacksonville. Rimdahl barely nicks rim. Rice trying to save. Throws it right to Correa for an easy two. Had no teammates near her. That, that's why you just let him go out of bounds. Don't save the ball underneath an opponent's team basket because of that right there. That can happen. Lessons learned. Yeah, if you don't know exactly where you're going, just let it go. And it'll be your ball underneath out of bounds. Winthrop, an 8-22 season a year ago. In the paint, Gassaway, the lefty, has that dance off the rim. Kyle, the board. Now it's Rimdahl. Kyle does have that range from 18. Correa chased off the liner. Leaner is pure. And a good decision not to take that first shot, but the defense is kind of on their heels. They're running out at you out of control. She takes just a dribble to the left, right inside the arc. And I was talking to Kelly about it. You know, I asked her, did you have a conversation with Leilani in terms of her mindset offensively attacking the rim? She's not settling for bad perimeter shots. She's a great shooter, but she's not settling for that. And you just saw it on the prior trip as Winthrop throws it away. And, and that's what you want to see. Make that decision quick. you got to make it in, in one or two seconds. Is this a good shot, or should I, do I have a better advantage if I take the dribble to the right or the left? And she's deciding, hey, I have a better mid-range right now opportunity at that point in the game. You can't shy away from the three-point shot, but you take it when it's there and you're comfortable. And she's improved a lot in that three-level scoring ability. Winthrop scoring drought nearing three minutes. Gators have scored the last six. Selgas, she's a sniper from behind the line. And Salgas is a player for Florida that has come in to be that three-point option for them. Another three-point option when she comes into the game. She was eight of 16 from three. Entering the day, she's now nine of 17. Hasn't shot it a whole lot, but when she does, she's been efficient. There's a jumper switch through by Jada Rice. East Tennessee transfer. Matharu steps in the lane. Kyle admits the bodies, floats it in. And that's the importance of trailing if you're a big. Go ahead, she was down there, but you saw the quickness of Aliyah Matharu to get from one side of the court to the other, weaving in and out of the defense. She misses the layup, but who's there to clean it up is your big girl down low. Keeps the ball high, puts it right in. Those are the things you want to practice right now for big game situations. And this is a tough lineup for Winthrop to match up against yeah. Rashea Kyle. Tallest player on the floor, Marissa Gassaway at 5'11". So you want to practice those good habits. Don't bring the ball down. Go towards the basket. Don't fade away even though you're playing smaller players. Correa slashes in. Salgas wanted it in the corner. And we'll get a foul. You see here the, the penetration in, and then the kick out for your three-point shooter. Bertie Rimdahl knows how to give a good pass to a shooter. She does just that, and then on the putback. 
Your big girl keeps the ball high, doesn't bring it down. You don't want to bring it down because that's where guards can get a hand on it. They can strip it away. They can get a jump ball. You keep that ball high where nobody else on the court can get it from her. Wholesale subs. Shea Kyle, Kenza Salkis, Leilani Correa take a seat. Jariah Warren, Layla Reynolds, and Faye Duke all come in. Duke gets doubled. Paisana tries to rip it away. Matharu down to the ground. It's high up. The alternate arrow goes to Winthrop. And the hustle for Winthrop. They're not giving up anything easy right now on an entry pass. Gators 22 points in the quarter. They scored 20 plus points in two quarters against Michigan. Again, the Big Ten's best scoring defense entering. Yeah, they made really good decisions on when to shoot, where to shoot from against that, that you're talking about the defense that Michigan put out. And that's what needs to carry over here in this game and then into the SEC. Paisano, too tall for Ronaldo Mark. Team's leading scorer from Miami, Florida. Made a couple of Juco stops. Turnovers piling up. That's their seventh of the quarter. We've had 11 total team turnovers in this first. Reynolds in that short corner against this zone. Now Winthrop showing zone to try to give Florida a different look. Great pass fake. I was going to say, that's exactly what you want to do in a zone. You pass fake one way. Birdie fat pass face to the corner. They jump just an inch. That's all she needs. She lets it fly, knocks it down. That's how you break a zone and get them out of it. Gators have scored 14 of the last 16. Off the mark. Fake two. She can trigger from there. Five to shoot. Matharu, does she know the clock? Three, two. Matharu makes the double. Oh, she got it at the horn. They'll look at it to see whether it was a three or a two. And Matharu, second leading scorer in the SEC, provides an exclamation point to the first. Time waning down. Go to your star. Double clutch. Back reviewed this jumper during the timeout. Aliyah Matharu did get it off in time. They reviewed that. Got it off in plenty of time. But it was a two. That right foot stepping forward was on the tape. So it's 27 to 11. Clearly a two. Right over. But hey. You got to credit Faith Duke coming out, setting the screen, knowing she was aware of the clock situation. She gets the ball into her guard's hands instead of taking the three where you, we talked about she could have shot the ball, but they pull it back out. Good screen to get her open. The Gators are currently in their best offensive stretch of their season. Now, these last two and change games, Gardner Webb, Michigan in the first quarter of this one, they're 11 of 18, over 60% in the first quarter. Which is really what you want when you have the number one team in the nation coming in Thursday. So you want to be really good offensively and be confident offensively when they come in. And what a way to kick off SEC <laughs> yeah, welcome, play. Welcome to SEC play. Don Staley and the crew, number one team in the country. And what a better statement that Florida could make coming out in that game. Ball's loose to the paint. Paisana lost it. Warren scoops it up. Cynthia Jordan, current assistant, was the director of basketball operations in South Carolina. Key connection yeah. between the two schools. Rimdahl throws it into a tight window. Wraps it around Mitharu. Rimdahl was open. Reynolds didn't see it. Shot clock dwindling down. Here's Duke on the back end. I think Duke had a really good pass out to Liam Mitharu on that inbound. What a play from Warren. Reynolds contorts, hard spill, but we'll get two shots. Yeah, talking about the play before, the pass in from Birdie, she ball, she throws it in, great catch, then a spin out. On this drive in, you see Aaliyah giving the ball up, charging in and just slipping. Yeah, those, those kind of hurt sometimes. But good attack mentality on the turnover, not thinking twice about it, and then making the extra pass. Ronaldo Mark picks up the foul, sends Reynolds to the stripe, an area of her game that she wants to improve on the most, just 53% coming into the game. And that's an area she really is going to want to improve on, especially throughout her career, because she's going to find herself at the line, I think, a lot because of the way that she, and her ability to attack the basket, uh, people are going to challenge her when she gets there. So she's going to have to be able to hit free throws. Gators disperse scoring. So far, only two players that have played have not scored. That's Warren and Broughton. Paisana comes out. Here's Naya Stallings, the 
grad transfer from Liberty. Comes on, number 24, Maroon. Burgos plays the point, seeing her first start of the season. Harassed by the Gators' best defender, Alberti Rimnall. Burgos still with the dribble. Mark turns the corner on Reynolds. Regains it, but it travels. Uh, Florida does a good job. They go to man, and they really defend well off the ball, not allowing the passes that went through at once in order to set their offense up. They have to go from the left side and then bring it back to the right side, and then they got a switch, but not really what they wanted as Florida does a great job of switching on the play, but making a play on the ball to force the travel. Still in this zone, Brittany found a cutting Mitharu. Shea and Kyle back on the floor. And when it comes in a zone like this, it gives you the ability to cut the way that Florida is. You have to move. You can't stay stagnant and just pass the ball around the perimeter. You have to make the defense work. So you've got to cut. You've got to make backside cuts for the guard. You've got to make post player flashes in, going to the short corner. Make them move around. And then if you can make those crisp passes, it's going to open up so much of the middle of the floor. They're going to try to pack it in, but Florida's ability to shoot from outside, they have to stretch out because they have to respect the three-point shot of these Florida players as well. Liam Mitharu graduating a few weeks ago. The ceremonies here inside the O-Dome. Got her bachelor's in education sciences. Sippy Broughton also did graduate. She'll walk in the spring. It's a big week last week for Liam Mitharu and the... Big game, or two weeks ago, big game against Gardner-Webb, and then big game against Michigan. Picked up her diploma. Yeah, a lot going not on. Bad, right? Yeah, not at all. And then prior to that, picked up the thousands point. Yeah. <laughs> Had that ceremony in the pregame we showed you earlier. Florida staying man defense, but playing aggressive, both on the ball, hand in the passing lane. They're able to get a screen off the ball, but can't hit the three-point shot. Blessing Oko misfires, goes out, last touch Florida. Well, we mentioned Gators on this mini two-game stretch where they've been incredibly impressive. Some of the numbers skewed, of course. Gators scored 115 against a restocking program in Gardner-Webb. Just under 99 points a game, nearly 60%. Had that 78-point win, 27 from Atharu with five threes against Michigan. And when you're coming off games like that, you, you want to come back. You haven't played at home in 42 days. It's been a long stretch, but you want to continue what you have just done the last two games out. <laughs> That's the one way to do it, get a potential and one. But you want to come in and you want to continue to shoot the ball well, to not make the little mistakes. On the drive in, look, with contact, she's just so good at controlling her body going towards the basket, not getting pushed off the mark like some players do to where you're not going to get that foul. So she's able to finish and get to the foul line. And that's what you want from uh, Leah Mathario and your guard who attacks the way that she does. And when I've interviewed Kelly Ray Finley throughout the years, one of the big phrases that she uses is hard and fast to the center of the floor. Mm -hmm. Leah Mathario does that consistently and does it effectively. And she has probing hands, last to touch. Right in front of us. And she will pick up. You know, 94 feet from the basket and pick up aggressive, hard on-ball defense to where you know she, she you're gonna ha you're gonna be after the game if you're an opposing guard, you're gonna have to take a breath of air because she will be on you like glue if she needs to be. Alexi Dyseko newly checked into the game takes the charge on Burgos. Dyseko, a player for Florida, coming in from the JUCO level, that's very athletic. Can do a lot for them come SEC time, especially with her ability to defend. She's very quick. We saw the way that she just took a charge, positions herself well defensively, then makes a really nice pass to a cutting Jariah Warren. Offensively, she sees the floor really well as another shot from our, the three-point threat. Yeah, one of two. From deep for Kansas Salgas. And this is also a good game for Florida, kind of to get players in who 
different mixed lineups as a oh, steal. That is just Jumps really the passing nice. lane. Jariah Warren, big strides to the bucket. So a lot of that against Michigan. Defense into offense. What Aliyah Matharu did, those 27 points tied a career high. Yeah, but it was the, the shooting percentage overall for Florida. I mean, they shot extremely well. In the first quarter, they were at 64% almost, 78% in the second quarter against Michigan, but continued that out and finished at about 57% for the whole game, which is really, really good. That's high percentage shots, and that's playing well offensively together when you have four players in double figures against a very good Michigan team. Winthrop misses just their third shot of the quarter. Dizeko from the corner. Bruce Ball, Lexia picks it up. A fresh 20. Great hustle for Florida. The shot doesn't fall, but you're there to get your own rebound and then get another opportunity to score. Knock down a three, why not? Correa extending her range from deep. And that's an area where they're gonna need her to be efficient, just 28% coming in. She's done so many things on the offensive end. Nine games in double figures this year in the first 11. Now for Correa, Offensively, she's gonna have to be on, and she, but also defensively, because you're gonna have to be, you're gonna be guarding a, a lot different players come SEC time uh, in different positions. They can be tall from the guard position, or they can be smaller and quick, so you're gonna have to adjust defensively. But offensively, she's gonna have to hit shots like this, open, top of the key. Florida will need her to score, and she's doing a good job of that in this season, especially like you talked about the last couple games. And I think maybe coming off the bench gives her just a little bit of more fire maybe in her belly, saying, hey, I'm, I'm coming off the bench. That doesn't really, you know, matter or affect. We, we've talked to Coach before and saying, hey, it's not about, you know, who starts, but who's finishing these games for us? Who's in at those moments that we need? Lob it inside, Rache Kyle. It's the double team, oh boy. It's a great pass inside from Correa, who just hit a three from the same position. Trying to find Salgas, ushers that out of play. Now, positioning for Kyle, the pass took her a little bit too far underneath the basket. And it's one of those where you're trying to seal off as a post player, and maybe you don't make that pass because of all the you know, just people around when you're throwing it in, because you have to be able to read the backside help. Because a lot of times as a post player, you don't see the backside help. You think you're open, but someone's lurking right behind you, or it puts you in a bad position. That's the importance of making the pass on point from the high post. Stalling, stop and pop, misfire. Struggles continue from the floor. Daiseko, a lightning bolt down the lane. Gators nearing 40 for the game as Daiseko gets in the score sheet. Now only one Gator has not scored. That's Zippy Broughton, who just missed at the doorstep a few possessions ago. Florida's gone pretty deep into their bench. They've brought five off the bench in this game. As Span can't collect it out of bounds. Already a 15th turnover for Winthrop. Yeah, prior to that timeout, Florida had 17 points off 13 turnovers for Winthrop. So they're making the most of the turnovers that are coming from Winthrop. And so you need to continue to do that. If you're going to turn them over, you want to score. Get stops and score, and Florida's doing a good job of that. See second quarter, 12 zip. Correa, similar spot to where she knocked down that three. And you got to be happy if you're Florida, if you could keep them from scoring in a quarter. Right now, Florida's yeah. doing that. There's still four minutes left, but defensively, it, if you're honed in on that, that's some, a focus that Florida should have here in the last four minutes. Duke shows the screen. Dysetko scurries inside off the glass. Back-to-back -back buckets for Alexia Dysetko. Brittany mentioned four, Juco Player of the Year, went to South Georgia Tech College from Sion, Switzerland. One of the oldest towns in Switzerland. 7,000 years of history. It's really you ever cool been there. to Switzerland? I have not been to Switzerland, but I hear it's beautiful. I think they have good chocolate there. Very good. Yeah. Beautiful mountains, great skiing as well. Span lays it in. But very cold. It is. But beautiful. Dysetko. I, I like the mentality she has yeah. right now, looking to attack. That was an, an attack from the get-go. Defense comes out, they're out of control, so she has a step on them. When she caught the ball, had a little jab, gets the defense off their, their heels, and then attacks right. Had a nice lane to the basket, adjusted her body to get the foul. Long journey for Samika Randall-Lay. 
The first year as full-time head coach at Winthrop was the 21-22 season, was the interim during that COVID-2021 season where pretty much anything went. Yeah. You could schedule a game <laughs> at any time, anywhere. I mean, it, it might be the week of. You just, yeah. Yeah, hey, you, can you guys play Friday? Sure, we're Former open. assistant at Cincinnati, Wright State, was a head coach at Ohio, Alabama A&M. And a couple of Power 5 stops as an assistant at West Virginia, Michigan State. Lady Vol, great from yeah. 98 to 01, over 1,900 career points. Two time first team all SEC members, so has that Southeastern Conference roots. So she definitely knows how to score. The score of the basketball, she can teach her players a lot of how to get to the rim, how to finish. A very good player for Tennessee. You can go on and on the Pat Summit yeah. coaching tree. It is amazing. Nice runner for Blessing Oak Hill. It's a tough look. 43 15. So that is. Now four points in the quarter. Only taken 16 shots. Warren hoists it up. For a shot, 14 more attempts in this game. Big reason why the number of turnovers, 15 of the 20 total turnovers in this game from the Eagles. Paisano works downhill, wraparound feed. Span got it deflected underneath. Warren comes up with it. Rimdahl runs the point with no Mitharu. Extra fine Correa attacks the rack. Her leaner. Back tap towards Paisana. Is able to save it to Mark. Here's a run out. Through the hands of Armani Reed out of play. It's a good push. But Florida able to disrupt just enough to take a bad pass. And now can they convert this turnover? You've got two minutes left. You want to really focus in this last two minutes of the second quarter if you're Florida. You have control of this game. You've done a really good job defensively in the second quarter, only holding them to, what, what is it, four points. And then you look to till it, still attack. A lot of times you can, you, you can lose focus, but you've got to stay locked in. Well, Scott Snyder, our director, just pointed it out. If you look at the turnover numbers, 16, the total points, 15. So more turnovers than points. And it's hard to win games when that happens. It is, especially <laughs> in a Power 5 gym. Yes. Oko swirls out from deep. They're 0 of 4 from 3. They're just 22% as a team, only 4 makes a game. Dude, setting up on the block, couldn't handle it. She thought it was last touch Winthrop. Early minutes here for Ernie Kindred in the first half. Aliyah Matharu checks back on. Matharu had that buzzer beater at the end of the first. She's two away from another double figure game. Would be her 12th straight to start a new season. Stoppage, Angel Burgos getting a band-aid on that right hand on the Winthrop bench. And Florida jumping into a full court press. And, and I think some of that is to continue to stay focused. Because if you just go back into a zone, you can kind of get lazy. But right now, you know, staying focused, working on full court pressure right now to see if you can turn them over here the last minute of the second quarter. Well, I'll say this. If the Gators continue to run away with this game, if you think they're going to take their foot off the gas, you have another thing coming because this little thing called net ranking matters. Which is crazy And margin right of victory yeah. matters. The Gators jumped... About, what was it? It was like 30 or 40? 40 spots, yeah. I believe, after the Gardner-Webb win because it was on the road and it was a 78-point win, albeit against one of the worst teams in Division I women's basketball. But right now they rest at the 49th net ranking in the country. That's six best in the SEC. Which is important come postseason play. Warren with the takeaway. Great Another pass. turnover. Correa slithers one through from Atharu. What great passing in transition. That was textbook pushing the ball up the floor. You had a nice outlet pass up and then the extra pass for an easy left-handed layup. Florida made that look way too easy. Correa splitting a double team with that bounce pass. Skaters nearing the half century mark. About a two second differential. Winthrop, they'll start Big South play on January 3rd against our old friend, Erica Lang Montgomery yeah. and Longwood. I'm sure Eric, Coach yeah. Lang Montgomery's watching. Uh, hey, I, Coach. Yeah, hey, how's doing? it going? Great job as an assistant. Earned yep. herself uh, another head coaching job. Was a head coach at Flagler previous here in the state of Florida and St. Augustine. 
really great coach, really yep. great person. Twelve point two shot clock has gone dark. Pass tipped Correa trying to fight for it. Broughton surging in. Last touch, Winthrop, so the Gators will get that final shot. All because of the hustle from Zippy Broughton. And that's what you get with Zippy. She's going to hustle every play, game in and game out, every minute that she is on the floor, every second. She's going to bring that hustle and that intensity. Broughton has not scored yet in the half. Almost lost it with five. Correa into the corner, Reynolds. A tray. That's money. Right at the buzzer. A couple of buzzer beaters for the Gators in the first half. 50 at the break. Well, let's start out with Leilani Correa, efficient for Florida in the first. And she has been. She's three of four from the field, one of one from the three-point line. She's coming in confidently and taking the shots that are provided for her. She's not shot a whole lot of threes of late, is one of one from distance. How about Alberti Rimdahl continues her hot shooting? Yeah, I mean, I love the ball fake. You saw the ball fake over for open up her shot for the three and her ability to get to the rim. She's not just one dimensional three point shooter, she also has an attack mentality when she can make those layups strong with contact. So don't make the little mistakes. Attention to detail here in the second half. You want to limit your mistakes and execute offensively and defensively so that you're confident coming into the game on Thursday. Gator shot 56% for the half. Winthrop, a tick below 40%. Gator 16 more attempts. Jada Rice fades and fires over Rindall. So halfway to their point production in the second quarter as a whole. And the first two of the third. Original starting five for the Gators to start this second half. Matharu undeterred until she got to the bucket, able to bump off a defender and score. They don't really come out and guard her when the ball is rotated over to the corner for the three. She has a lane to the basket. The defense doesn't even attempt to stop her until she's inside the paint. That's a strong finish. He said 10 attempts, has knocked down five. She's in double figures with 12 in 13 minutes. The SEC's second leading score, just under 20 per. Rice flashes to it. Winthrop at six and six. They'll start Big South play on January 3rd. Their fourth power five opponent. Shot clock dwindling down, Gassaway. Not her range, foul underneath. Rashea Kyle is on the ground. Who's this on? Uh, a little tussle. Kind of finds herself on the ground, trying to position herself defensively. They got it on Shea. Oh, on Shea, they called it on Shea. Kind of hooked on the backside, I guess. The players kind of laughing about it a little bit. Those two have been going at it. Burgos, who saw the start, will inbound. Into Span, spins into the lane. Tried to lean in on Kyle, swats it out. But Kyle, that, but Kyle, Kyle, that's a pass that Florida doesn't want to allow, and you cannot allow a pass directly into the post player on post ball side underneath out of bounds, especially against, say, a South Carolina, because that's immediate points. This has been the Gators' best quarter during this two-game win streak, really in the month of December. They played well in the third. It's about closing games out in the fourth. They had that two-game losing streak against Marshall and Tulsa. There's the dime from Rimdahl to Rashea Kyle. Great entry pass. Uh, I had kind of an angle of where Birdie was on the extended kind of elbow out three-point line. And she put the ball right where Shea Kyle needed it to catch it away from the defense and go right up for a layup. Great positioning by your post player, but really great entry pass. Gators have assisted on seven of their 21 makes. And another thing that in this game, in the second half, you want to continue to do, you want to be a good teammate, put the ball in a position for your teammate to be able to score. And that's good passes. And you see this here with Birdie. On the wing, just puts it right in, zips it. Doesn't allow the defense to, to come to get a hand on the ball because she puts it away enough from them, but right where... The post player didn't have to get out of position. That's a big thing, Kyle, as a post player. When you're in position down low, you don't want to have a pass where you get out of your stance, but that leads you towards the basket, away from the defense. You're kind of trusting your guard to say, hey, there's no one behind you that way. I'm leading you towards the basket for an easy two points. Yeah, great chess player. You're always one move ahead. Rindall knew where she was going with that mm -hmm. ball before she caught it. And, and that's one of the things that makes her so special is her ability to see the, a play ahead. 
uh, I'm getting the ball, but I know my, my post player is cutting towards the basket. I'm going to go ahead and catch it as soon as I get it and let it go, let it fly. And when you have guards that can do that and they work so well with their post players, I, I mean, it's beautiful basketball to watch. Atharu steps out. Sub in for Winthrop. The 17 points were held under 50 on December 20th against North Florida. 55-49 loss, their second straight game here in the Sunshine State. Oh, that was Ellie Garnett who's come in. Juco transfer. Golden Colorado as Reynolds knocks that one out. Great play in the passing lane. She leads out with her arm. Winthrop makes a mistake in making that pass because of the ability of Florida to play the passing lane. They've done a really good job of being able to tip the ball and then go get it. Unfortunately there for Florida, she kind of tipped it out of bounds. She tries to save it, but he's unable to do that. Rice, quick crossover. Garnett in the corner. The lefty can't hit. Great pass out though. The defense draws in, she kicks it out for a three and then a good block by Faith Duke. Gassaway gets the members bounce. Uh, Gassaway doesn't shy away. Even though she gets the first one blocked, she stays with it, gets the bounce back from the block and then puts it in. Marissa Gassaway coming into play. Top rebounder in the Big South, averaging nearly a double-double. It's been a quiet day for her, stepping up in class a little bit. As Matharo gets that ball away somehow to Rache. Kyle, ball goes out of play. Last touch, Winthrop with 15 to shoot. Shea Kyle, be interesting to see how she plays on Thursday against South Carolina. She six double doubles entering this game. That's near the top in the SEC, second most in the SEC behind just Lauren Ware of Texas A&M. Yeah, currently, yeah, averaging a double double. So you're gonna have to come in Thursday, and Florida will need her to have a double double because you're coming up against some really stiff competition, some really good bigs, and it's your time to shine. Big Duke going to the foul line. What a job Kelly Ray Finley has done reestablishing Florida women's basketball. Got an interim year, bringing the Gators to the NCAA tournament, having some real marquee wins during that season. Yeah, there, there was a stretch for, what was it, six, seven games straight in the SEC. Yeah. Some big time top 25 wins, exciting wins and really brought the excitement back to this women's basketball program. Had a big blowout win over Tennessee on their home floor, beat Kim Mulkey and LSU that year. Went to the WNIT, were able to make a March run last season. Fell short of the WNIT semis. Shot clock down to three. Mark into span, too hot to handle. Broughton, two on one. Correa, also on the break. Squeezes one up and in. And another unselfish play by Zimmy. She knew, I see it right here at half court, the way that they were running in a two on one situation, she was just timing it in a perfect pass to her teammate. And I think sometimes, I think that gets, you know, Zippy brings that excitement and when she makes those good passes, it's just like hitting a great shot for her. You can see in transition, she knows she crosses it back over to her right. A, a true no-look pass. She really saw that out of her peripheral vision, where she doesn't look at it and then look away. She just saw it the whole way, looking straight forward. And that's what makes it such a good pass. Go well, back to her high school days, was the Alabama Gatorade Player of the Year. Alabama Miss Basketball, recruited by Rutgers, went there. Had a previous relationship with Kelly Ray Finley when she went to the transfer portal. Good high hands on the hedge from your post player. Not fouling when they hedge out is really big for Florida. Those are the disciplined things that you want to try to do here in this game, particularly in the third and fourth quarter now, is play defense without fouling. Hedge, trap, without fouling. Get the steal out of the trap. Correa all the way in. A couple of transitional lay-ins for Leilani Correa. And she's now in double figures. And good defense by Florida. That made Winthrop try to, they had to run the clock down. They forced a shot that they don't really want. Not a good look. And because of that, they get a transition bucket. 
Leilani Correa adding to this 6 0 Gator run. Fast break points for the Gators. It's Leilani now with 11. You play SEC at home, South Carolina, and then you go to Tennessee, or to Vandy, excuse me, and then to Tennessee. And while Tennessee's record may not be the normal record that they have, they've played a really tough schedule. And it's always hard to play Tennessee at Tennessee because of the environment, the history. It's a huge arena. I mean, what is it seat like? It's not 90,000. It's like, it's like Tennessee? Yeah. About 20,000. It's like 20,000. It's, 20, it's huge. Maybe under, a little bit under 20,000. But they packed that place out, of course. I mean, it's just the, it, that's a fun place to play because of, you know, again, the history that's there. Um, it, and it's always fun when you're Florida to, to play there and win. It's Bucket or it's a Gassaway. So the Gators will learn a lot about their team early in SEC play. We'll have Georgia in January, very good Mississippi State team that has seen themselves in the top 25. Ole Miss under Coach Yo, former Gator KK Dean's actually out for the year with a torn ACL. That was tough news to hear. KK was the top scorer for the Gators, transferred over to Ole Miss, so they're not gonna have her services this year, but that's a team that's picked near the top four of the conference behind South Carolina and LSU. But that's anybody's guess because there's a lot of great games when you get outside of maybe that top two, those two dominant teams. And it's always fun when you start SEC play because the competition just, I think it takes another notch up. And it's difficult to play in the SEC and there's a reason why special players come to the SEC and why, you know, it just means more. It sure does. Ball out of play. Went through multiple chances at the rack. Can't finish. Florida picked 10th in the SEC preseason poll this year. Currently only, and I don't remember the last time this was the case until this year, only two teams in the AP SEC top, or the AP top 25. Two SEC teams. You got South Carolina and LSU. You got yeah. some teams receiving votes, but only two in the top 25 currently. And which I, I think it's been a long time since you have heard that, because usually you have the Georgias up there and, and, and some teams that I think are, are somewhat rebuilding, but when it comes to SEC play, you're gonna see, I think, Players come up or teams come up in the ranking. It's very Shame. and one. Or not and one, but it could have been an and one. They're not calling any other good contact around. Yeah, they're going to keep the clock running. Yeah. Shea Kyle has had an outstanding year. The transfer from Purdue. Double doubles and four of the last five. Kyle eight and six. Here's Gassaway starting to heat up here in this third. And a great shot. Turn around, catches the ball, faces up against a much taller defender, and is able to rise up and shoot above her. Good positioning. Couldn't finish. Wanted the whistle from the baseline official. But what you just talked about, these are the type of moments in games, though, you have to play through that. You, you've got to not fade away from it, attack the rim, because you might not get the whistle call to go your way and how are you going to respond and how are you going to just go ahead and make that shot? Ronaldo Mark gets fouled and root to the rim. You can see Samika randall Lay. he was animated about something and, on that bench. Went and right always to the board. coaching, yeah. No matter what the score is, she's out there coaching, getting her team better and prepared for their conference play as well. I talked to Kelly in the pregame. She said in her 16 years of coaching, first of all, I was shocked it's been that long that she's been yeah. coaching 16 years, that the first practice back from break was the best that she'd seen from a team that she's coached in her 16 years. Were you at that practice, yeah. Brittany? Yeah. You were? Were you on the practice team? <laughs> were you getting bu buckets getting bucket. into the practice team? And they, they had a really good practice. They really did. Ran the ball up and down the floor. They got after it. You know, played some mini quarters, and I think that's important when you take such a long break to be able to come back and say, hey, we're gonna kind of do a little bit of mini type game situations where you're out there and, and we're not stopping the clock. Cause you gotta get back in, not back in shape, you didn't take that much time off, but you do get a little bit of a break. I would love to see Florida's record when Brittany's on the scout team. <laughs> Pretty I mean, good. Oh, that Ryan Howard on the scout team. Weren't you on the <laughs> Michigan scout team as well? Yeah, yeah, Georgia yeah. Tech scout team. Those are the two of the three Power Five wins in non-conference play. 
think it comes into a lot of coaching. They got good coaching. You see Ryan Howard when you can bring that into yeah, any practice. Yeah, that's pretty good too. Yeah, yeah that's, that's an immediate bucket every time. I mean, the her ability to score. And that's a and bucket a, right a there. A bucket getter. Pretty but, can get buckets. <laughs> Yeah, you know, back in the day. She'll play in the manager's yeah. games on the road when we travel for radio. And, you know, the night before a game, she'll... Are you allowed to bring, like, you know, you know Ryan Howard into that as, like, a... Yeah, you know what? There's got to be a clear you know? line of known <laughs> WNBA number one nah, picks I, I, I think, it, I think it's good game. to go. I think it's good to go. I don't know. I That's mean, she, tough. She's a phenomenal player, and it, it's just the knowledge that she's bringing to the players here, to the coaching staff, her ability to come in and and really connect with the players and the younger players in particular. And, you know, her first season here coaching, I think she's doing a phenomenal job. You know, when they extended the number of assistants that you could have in Division I women's and men's basketball, Kelly Ray Philly didn't want to go out and get a cookie cutter. She said, mm -hmm. she, this is her words, a cookie cutter hire, somebody who's a good coach, you know, a good recruiter. But in this case, Ryan Howard is somebody who's going to develop the players. They look yes. at somebody and say, that's what I want to be. That's how I want to play. Those are the goals I want to achieve. And you can and you can watch her. You can watch her do her workouts because she's got to continue to do her workouts. Yeah. So you can come in and see, hey, that's how a pro attacks her workouts. Gets in the gym extra, gets shots up, and that's what it's going to take in order to, you know, be a potential number one draft pick and a top ten player in the WNBA. Has forged a really good relationship with the freshman Layla Reynolds, number thirteen in white. Of course, has aspirations one day to get to the WNBA. I mean, as the, you know, all players who really step on the floor. That's why you're playing to continue your career at the professional level. And what a great rebound. Good snag by Shea Kyle down low. Too strong. Florida quick in transition, but it's a bucket that you would like, you know, Bertie Rimdell to get comfortable knocking down in transition. In years past, there was a little bit of hesitation about Bertie Rimdahl. Mm -hmm. Her shot wasn't going down. You take that extra clutch, and then all of a sudden the defender would, would get on her, and she'd have to give it up. A little less hesitation as she gets older now and becomes a veteran on this team. Faru accelerates inside. Investigative drive around the bend. No. Shea Kyle nearing a double-double. Get a foul on the floor. Jay Kyle's ended up on the floor a couple times today in this game. Florida's had a cold stretch offensively. No point in the last three minutes. Francis Brown comes in, Juco transfer. It's been a little quiet offensively for Florida. They, they were shooting the ball really well. But right now, I mean, still shooting the ball well, 55%. But like you said, they, they haven't scored in a little bit of time. They'd like to see that end here to close out the third quarter. Ball's loose. Here's Burgos. They can hold for the last shot if they would like it. Shot clock's now off. We're doing a good job defensively. Getting her off her mark and then great block by the freshman. Inside 10. Three through the air, blessing Oko. It's a blessing of her own from behind the three-point line. There's a half-court heave from the Tharu. Gators try to go three for three on buzzer beaters today. Gator is trying to close out this one. Final 10 minutes on the other side. There was the first buzzer beater of the game. And then to go into the break, the freshman Layla Reynolds with a corner pop. Florida up big. In the floor, you have 28 points off turnovers. And so you have 32 points in the paint, but you, you know, selfishly want a little bit more here in the fourth quarter if you're Florida. You really want to finish strong and on a high note. Gators had 50 at the break, outscored Winthrop 23 to four in the second quarter. Fate Dude got her own miss, second effort. So we get two. But Fate Dude against Michigan and only played seven minutes, had that lower leg injury. She went down, did not return in that game. So Florida played most of that game against the Wolverines without 
one of their starters. Yeah, and one of their more prominent post players down low that, you know, whether she's scoring or not scoring, her presence on the on the court makes a big difference for Florida. The way that she communicates offensively, the way that she communicates defensively, especially when Florida goes into a zone and she's the middle of that zone, really directing traffic and having players where they need to be, when they need to be there. Called the foul on the floor, so the Gators will end up. Still against this zone. Which is good work for Florida to try to find those open gaps like they did in the first quarter. With only six seconds left on the shot clock. This is where Matharu works best with the shove off. Great defensive trip from Jada Rice. Really good on-ball defense. By Rice. Kind of gets Aaliyah off the mark in the backcourt, but you can see how quick she gets it from the backcourt to the frontcourt for Florida. But then the off-arm shove. It's kind of plagued her early in the season. Well, Jada Rice, who you saw on that trip, actually leads the Big South and steals one of the best the premier defenders in that conference, number 10 in Maroon. Here's Rice. Shake and bake. Leans in on Reynolds, off balance. Mathor with a rebound. It's quick, fast pace. Maybe too fast. Matharu stepped out. Again, you have Florida in this fourth. You have worries in the back of your mind of scoring margin, winning margin when it comes to net ranking. So if you think about normal kind of, I guess, blowouts is the word yeah. I would use, where you would go deep into that bench. One, the Gators don't have that deep of a bench, but they're going to continue to push the pace and try to trap like you just see on this possession. And, and in that, you want to play under control. Under control of the game, still controlling the tempo of the game, but like you said, when you have that in the back of your mind, you have to also finish strong. Burgos had her shot deterred by Matharu. We're doing a good job of passing the ball around the perimeter of this zone to find that open shot. And because of the, the drive in by Aaliyah that kicks it back out to the wing and then reverses it, one ball movement around, makes that defense move. They're a step late, so Birdie has the attempt and one dribble pull-up shot. Sign of a, a great shooter is she can shoot from all levels. She's hit a couple of those I like to call Papa shot type looks yeah. from in and around the lane. Here's Rice, stripped by Warren. Gators get their 10th steal. Florida throws it away. And those are the little things that you don't want to get a turnover and then turn it right back over. You want to be strong with the ball, maybe slow it down a little bit in transition if you don't have control of it until you get the look that you want. Rimdahl tripped up, and Matharo says, I didn't want that whistle, knocked down three. <laughs> You can see the drive into the basket that pulls two defenders in and then another drive into the basket draws those defenders over and then that allows the shot off because you've pulled the defense in to collapse in on the drive to the basket that's not there. It's almost, you know you're not necessarily attacking hard to get to the rim but just to draw the defense in for the kick back out for a shot. Spent some time with the Denmark national team of Bernie Rimdahl this summer. Played in Japan. And what an opportunity that is, really to get to see the world, but also the opportunity to play with you know, other professionals and really advance your game up. There's Jariah Warren. She's been quiet, but knocks down a big three for Florida. Five points for Jariah Warren. She had a triple make against Michigan. She's a player that's going to be very big defensively come SEC play. Is going to be forced to play a lot of taller and bigger players at that four spot where she's spent most of her time here this year. Yeah, so this year she's kind of moved over to the four, four spot for Florida, and that's allowed different things. So offensively, you see it stretches the floor for them, and she can knock down the three. She has to be respected because she has the ability to drive like a guard to the basket when post players are guarding her in man. But also, you know, her ability to get rebounds for Florida is huge. And, and despite her size, that's about heart, and she gets a lot of rebounds for Florida. Back and forth pace. Winthrop with a loss, who finished non-conference play at six and seven. Right now their net ranking is 309. That doesn't necessarily matter for a team like that. You gotta win your conference tournament, get into the NCAA tournament, as this will be an offensive yeah. foul. 
Okay, that's going to be an offensive foul right in front of two referees. An easy call for them. Good defense by Birdie. On ball defense. She plays really, really well, moves her feet well, and then draws the charge. A whole lot of subs come in. Salgas, Kindred, and Broughton all enter the floor. Well, Winthrop is a university in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's about an hour away from the Gators' next opponent in Columbia, South Carolina. About 3,900 undergrad was a you know, small public university founded in 1886. Did you with the history book. Yeah. It's a little, Wiki minor, a little Wikipedia minor knowledge for you right there. But for Winthrop, this is a, a good game too. They've played some three, this is their third SEC school to get them ready for their conference play. Yeah, they lost to A&M, Alabama. They're finishing up non-conference tour here in Gainesville. Florida back at home after seven straight away from Exact Tech Arena. Their longest road stretch since well, this arena was renovated in 2016-17. Yeah, when they had to play some games, home games were down in Ocala. Yeah, flip from the floor. Not settling for threes either. We've seen some jumpers around the lane. And another one of those sharpshooters that Florida's going to need to play a big role. Birdie on the bench to start this segment here. It's a configuration of five. You don't see a whole lot. I would say this is a, a lot smaller of a lineup for Florida that has on the floor right now. So you're going to see, I think, a lot more attacks to the basket. They're going to have to battle for rebounds offensively and defensively. Florida 28 points off turnovers. They've turned over Winthrop 21 times. Oko leaves that three short. Great rebound. by Kindred down low. Couldn't see who it was at first, but she skies above, gets it at the high point and brings it down. Kindred number 21 in white, plenty of SEC experience. Mm -hmm. No stranger to SEC play, transfer from Texas A&M. Which will be big, I think, come SEC time because she's not gonna shy away from any of that contact or, or be wowed about any of the arenas that you step into. It's evident your bigs are going to get into foul trouble mm -hmm. at some point in SEC play. Mm -hmm. Kindred, who hasn't played a whole lot on average minutes-wise, certainly will have to play a bigger role in SEC play. 40-point game. You have any New Year's resolutions? Any I, big that's ones? what I thought you were going to ask. And then, I mean, I've never really been one of those that, you know. No. How about you? You know what? You're going to think about it. I just want to keep being me in the yeah, new year. Just keep being you. Not new and improved. Like I'm going to be new and improved. That's what I'm going to be. New and improved. New and improved. Very general, very cliche, <laughs> very perfect. New and improved me. Bodies tangling all over the place, a rugby scrum. Got to like the hustle for both teams in this game with just under five minutes left. Loose ball on the floor. Not just letting it go, but Dizeko there for Florida, even though they're up big, still able to you know throw her body on the line. It's a high five from coach. That's how you get those extra minutes, getting an extra possession for your team. Now down this stretch offensively, they a great drive. She's had a great game so far as the ball gets knocked out of her hands, just offensively in her attack mentality. I think it's the first time we've really kind of seen her out there looking to score when she's on the floor. All right, let's tie all this in to basketball. If you're Kelly Ray Finley and you look at your team heading into you know, January 4th in SEC play, what are her New Year's resolutions? When you look at this team, what are some of the things that you think have to get tightened up? We talk a lot about the positives, but in terms of improvements, where do they need to go here over the next couple weeks? In the next couple weeks, I think it's the attention to details. It's the little things that I think make the big results. So when you can do the little things over and over, they create those big results that you need in the SEC. So whether that's, you know, your bigs going towards the basket, not fading away from the contact, finishing strong, and then, you know, defensively talking, communicating. I think everything, you know, has to step up a level when you come to SEC play. You have to be able to know and read your own teammates and get them in the right positions. As you pointed out, coming into the game, Paige Clawson getting uh, some minutes here in the fourth quarter. I mean, you know it firsthand 
and it, it can be cliche that everything has to be sharper in SEC play, but it is a half it, step quicker, is it, it not? It is a half step quicker. You, the athletes, you know, you're, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're, they're more athletic, they're getting up higher. I mean, you look at South Carolina, they've got well over six fours on their team. Yeah. And, and I think one of the other things that Florida is, is definitely going to have to improve on is the free throw line. You, you've got to hit free throws consistently in the SEC. We've seen it time and time again where teams have won and lost games from the foul line. Zippy gives it up. Rashea Kyle had the steal. Zippy was trying to reward her with a bucket. Maybe she just wanted another rebound. The whistle comes. That's against Shea. Uh, an offensive foul shoulder, which is, is seen a little bit more when you're the, the bigger player on the floor. It's, it becomes a lot clear, yeah, just oh, a yeah. shove off. Yeah, that's, Can't do that. That's clear. She's kind of laughing about it now. She didn't get away with that. Well, we're on double-double watch for Shea Kyle. Eight points, 11 rebounds. Familiar territory for her. She had five double-doubles all of last year, has six this season. And on pace for seventh here in the final 327. And if you're Florida, you want her to continue that, that trend. Keep getting double-doubles in the SEC. Which, like you talked about, a little bit harder come SEC time to get those double-doubles, but that's what you want. There was an intentional foul from Zippy Broughton, her fourth foul. So that'll send Blessing Oko to the line. So Winthrop will get two shots in the ball here. We'll take another look. A uh, little hold of the jersey. And anytime you do that, it is an intentional foul when you get someone's jersey and pull and hold them by. Whether that's on a layup or something like that, or just getting open. Yeah, it's holding the jersey of Armani Reed. Zippy comes out, Matharu comes in. Great defensive day for Zippy Broughton. Played 14 minutes, only took one shot. Matharu back in. And you'll see Matharu here, even with 320 left, she's not going to let up defensively. She's going to still continue to have that mentality of being an aggressor defensively. And you'll see that her teammates as well, but that's where she's got to be careful is with the hands on the ball when you're moving after out of a trap. You cannot get that foul. That's what she doesn't need to get. But you'll see the intensity of Florida's defense step up a little bit when she's on the floor. Yeah, we highlighted in the beginning of the game just the, the sheer number of fouls on average for the Gators, about you know, 18, that's five a quarter. So that's sending your opponent to the free throw line. They lead the SEC in fouls per game. And you cannot have Ali Matharu in foul trouble late in games. Well, she's an important factor to this team, again, offensively and defensively, but especially down the stretch in tight games and in the SEC where you know, she knows how the SEC works as well. And while she didn't play last year, she has played uh, many a game in the SEC and in those environments. Inside, Rashea Kyle. Gators, their two stars still on the floor, up 40. Matharu and Kyle. See if the Gators try to get Paige Kloss in a bucket. Former walk-on turned to scholarship player, number 22 in white. And there's your double-double for Shea. 10 points, 11 rebounds. Seventh of the year, and we'll call that. Send it the other way, I think. You see a great high-low pass, post to post. The timing of that is what's so nice if you're Florida. The movement, when the high post catches the ball and is turning, your other post player is diving to the basket. Great timing and delivery of a pass from Kindred to Shea Kyle to get that double-double. So most likely we'll do it for Shea Kyle. Peters will get back to practice. We've seen a lot of energy out of the holiday break. They had to come back to campus the day after Christmas Day, so everybody went to their home base after the matchup against Michigan. Then you have to be back to campus pretty soon after Christmas to get geared up for this game. Have to spend New Year's here in Gainesville. And that's basketball season for you. you you've got to come back quick. You don't get those long breaks over holiday seasons. A lot of time, you know, Thanksgiving, you're traveling away. You only get a couple days off for that Christmas break. And then, you know, for 
college kids at spring break, you don't want spring break off because that means sometimes you haven't made the play the tournament. Yeah. So Saugus dips out on a three. Kindred the rebound, the stick back dances out. That would have been Kindred's first points. Everybody on that bench has played for the Gators. Only three have not scored. Gators will finish up non-conference play, nine and three, four and one at home, as Dizeko called tie up. And you know, jokingly, Kelly had said that, you know, I'm not doing this whole seven straight road game thing again. So I think that's the last time the Gators will be away from home for 40 plus days. A lot of that has to do with the availability of the arena. There's a lot of different factors that you don't necessarily see on the surface. And both teams, the, the men and the women, spent a long time away from home. I think the men had a stretch of 34 consecutive days without a home game, or one home game in 34 days. You don't see a lot of Power 5 teams playing that many games on the road, non-conference play, and that was the case. Not, and in a row, too. We're looking to close this game out with just under two. Trying to keep it clean, getting the ball inside. And, and if a post player is playing behind like that, you want to give it to your post player. If you can see her numbers, feed her the ball. You look at Florida's non-conference play, and any season has peaks and valleys, and you can look at Florida's December alone. They were currently 2-2, two and two, soon to be 3-2 and two in the month. They had those head-scratching back-to-back losses at Marshall, at Tulsa, where it left this team trying to find a lot of answers. But they answered really well in two back-to-back -back wins. One against uh, was the, the Gardner Webb and then Michigan. Hunter, and then Michigan being their Michigan, most impressive yes, win absolutely. of the bunch. And, and a kind of a neutral site, but still, you know, the environment, the Jumpman Classic. You know, Jumpman puts on a really good classic up in North Carolina. A lot of involvement with, you know, the four teams that are there. But that's a really big win, you know, seemingly on the road. Gators 5-11 and 11 in the SEC a season ago, so we'll get an offensive foul. All right, if you're watching at home, everybody keep your eyes on number 22 in white. Uh, try to get her the ball, get her a shot, get her some buckets. I'm going to go ahead and say they're going to run some action here for Paige Clawson to get a bucket up 40. One of the hardest workers that you'll ever be around. In practice, an elite student. Uh, yes. The smartest person you'll ever talk to and very humble about it as well. All right, Paige is set up underneath. Off the hands of Dizeko, Gators don't get a look there. I think I jinxed it. Yeah. I... Jinxed it into a turnover, <laughs> didn't I? I have that effect. There's still time though. Minute, ten, minute eight left, I almost said minute 10, but minute eight, Florida can get a stop. You still the pressure up was still a minute, not allowing just an easy walk up. Big thanks to Jeremy Otter, Scott Snyder, our entire SEC network crew, pulling double duty today with the men's game. All the camera people here inside yeah. Exact Tech Arena, our buddy Hank here courtside. And not an easy thing to do. They pull it off, they pull it off in style. You gotta listen to us in their headsets for <laughs> two hours. It's tough in itself, so appreciate you guys. Happy holidays, happy new year to everybody out there watching. Can't wait, SEC play on the horizon. The drama really begins. Oh, right off the hands of Kindred. Final seconds, here's Reed playing bumper cars. Two shots. And a good push in transition, draws the contact in. Finds herself at the foul line. Gonna get two more points for herself and her team. Well, it doesn't look like Paige is gonna get that shot. Gators are gonna get it back, probably dribble it out. Yeah. Bring it across half. Yeah. Getting some instructions from coach. Winthrop will finish up their second straight game here in the state of Florida. Try to bounce back after a 6 and 12 Big South campaign a year ago that saw them finish ninth. 
Rimdahl most likely will dribble this one out. Gators never trailed here today. The end of one chapter. Florida looking to get back to the NCAA tournament after a year absence. And the next and more important chapter now will begin. SEC play, number one South Carolina on the horizon.